QuickBooks Online 2022, reversing entry, accounts receivable, or sales. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in the Get Great Guitars file. We set up with a 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 1 to 5%. Currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. If you wanted to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Let's open up a few tabs and they get great guitars so that we can put reports in them. We're going to do so by right clicking on the tab up top, duplicate the tab back to the tab to the left right click on it again and duplicate it again back to the tab to the left right clicking again and duplicating another time as that is thinking let's see where the reports are located in the accounting view going over to the accounting view they're right here in the reports that's where their home is that's where they live that's where the reports live and then if we go back to the business view second tab we're in the business overview section To reports and that's where the reports reside we're going to close up the hamburger up top we're going to then open up the balance sheet let's open up the big balance sheet and uh, do their changing of the ranging up top from 010122 to 022822 that being our cut off cut off date 0228 that is let's go to the tab to the right and we're going to go to the business overview again this time of course in the reports hamburger closed the profit and loss, the profit and the loss, the income statement, running it for the range of 010122 to 022822, and run it. <laughs> Tab to the right, let's go to the business overview this time. In the reports, closing the hamburger, we're gonna type in this time, searching for the trusty trial balance. The trusty TB, we should put it in our favorites, but it should be a favorite, I think. I just type it in there though. I'm going to put it up top and say this is from 010122 to 022822, that being our cutoff date, and run it. So there we have our trial balance. Now last time we did an adjusting entry, we're imagining a situation where we had an invoice that was entered after the cutoff date, the cutoff date being February 28 in this case, the end of February but for which the work was done before the cutoff date and therefore in the accrual basis method, we should have recorded the revenue in the time frame it was done, that being before the cutoff date, even though the invoice wasn't entered until after. So if I go to the first tab, for example, you'll recall if I hit the drop down that the invoice will typically be entered into the system uh, you know when the work is done it's the report that is closest to the point in time that the work is done even if it's done on an accrual basis even if we're not getting the cash at the same point in time that we are creating the sale but that doesn't mean that it's actually the point in time that we did the work per se it's easiest to see that when you're thinking about a job cost type of system in which case you'd have to count up the hours before you bill someone or issue the invoice and so it's quite possible that the invoice is written after the point in time or after the cutoff date when the work was done before the cutoff date that's what we're going to imagine here now we did it with inventory as well uh, because I think it's a little bit less easy to visualize how that would happen with the inventory but because the inventory is a more complex transaction and we still have the same cutoff principles that we want to adhere to we did the invoice to do kind of like the more complex scenario so let's take a look what the what the actual invoice was so let's do a quick recap go into the second tab which is our balance sheet now there was an invoice that was entered in march i believe march 5th that we brought back into the current time period by doing an adjusting entry with a journal entry type of format so let's take a look at the accounts that were impacted now remember this is as of the cutoff date but when i drill down onto the information i'm going to extend the date range so we could see both the, the current item that we entered as well as the original invoice that was entered in after the cutoff date on March 5th. So let's go down and say we're gonna go into the A to the R, the accounts receivable, scroll down a bit. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see this is going to be the, the adjusting entry we put into place right there for the 525. 
Now, if I increase the range up top, and let's say I bring this out through March, 03, 05, 22, and we'll say 03, 31, 22, the whole month, even though there's no activity in it, in essence, except for that transaction. So here's the, here's the actual invoice. So we've got the 525 here. It's been entered twice at this point in time. So we needed to enter it again up here so that we have it in place before the cutoff date but we also have it in here on March 3rd. So as of March uh, 3rd, we will have it input twice if we don't do something about it. We're not gonna delete this one. We're not gonna change the date of the original invoice, but instead we're gonna enter a reversing entry, a reversing entry as of the first day of March, not on March 5th, which you might say, why don't I put it on March 5th? because that's when the invoice took place and that's when it will net out at that point in time. You're gonna have five days, in other words, or four days of weirdness, of something not looking quite right. And that's true because our objective here is to is not to have everything correct in the middle of the of the month, in the middle of the time period. It's to, it's to basically know exactly where the cutoffs are and make things correct as of the cutoff. 228, reverse them all right after the cutoff. 3-1 in this case so that we know where all the reversing entries are. We're going to sacrifice the fact that we're not going to be on a perfect accrual basis in the middle of the month in order to have a more efficient kind of method so we know exactly what is going on uh, during, the, during the accrual and reversing process, the adjusting and reversing process. Okay, so going back to the balance sheet, the other side's on the income statement, of course, the income statement. So if I go into that, I'm going to scroll in a bit and we go into like the sale of the product because we sold product here on this one. I'm gonna scroll down now. And we got that one, journal entry. There's the journal entry. If I increase the date range to 030522, 030522, and scroll down, we're gonna say, okay, same thing here. There it is, the original invoice was entered after the cutoff date. We brought it before the cutoff date with a journal entry, not an invoice to show that it was an adjusting entry. But as of the original invoice after the cutoff date, it will have been entered twice. So we'll reverse that. That's what we're doing now. We're doing a reversal going back on over. And now we're gonna go to the balance sheet again. The difference between the two is the sales tax. So the sales tax is a liability when we create an invoice. So the liability account is under the California Department of Tax and Admissions. So this is where the original one was. We made a sub account for a sales tax here to do our adjusting entry, which came out to $25 so that we didn't mess up the original item here. So we're gonna reverse that as well. Same kind of scenario, even though it's in another account, we're gonna reverse that first day after the cutoff March 1st so that uh, it won't be in there twice. And then we've got the inventory. The inventory also went down, you'll recall. If I go into the inventory, we're gonna say that uh, we, we entered adjusting entry, decreasing the inventory. If I go down to it, there's our adjusting entry there. If I then increase the date to 030522 and run it, then we've got that in there two times as of three five so we got that's we're going to reverse that that's what we're going to do we're going to fix that going back on over we're just noting all the problems right now there's a lot of problems that we caused and if we go back to the tab to the right the other side of that is in the cost of the goods that are sold on the profit and loss or income statement let's check it out scrolling down <clears throat> And we're going to say there is the adjustment. If I was to change the date up top to 030522, so I can, that's not a 2, 030522, and run it, then we got the same scenario here. So now it's in there again, and we've got the two transactions. Okay, is that all the problems we have? Is that all we have to worry about? No, not quite, because there's also a sub ledger anytime we deal with accounts receivable back to the balance sheet by the way anytime we deal with accounts receivable we also have to deal with the fact that there's a sub ledger because we have to apply a customer to it and there's also a sub ledger for inventory we don't want to mess those up we don't want to mess those up let's open up the reports for them by right clicking on the tab to the right duplicating it let's go back to the tab to the left right click again and duplicate again and open up two more sub reports I'm going to pull the one to the right that it's, that's thinking that's been thinking longer to the left so that it see how it refreshes a little faster. 
so I can go in here and sa I saved like probably a full three seconds right there by doing that little maneuver. I'm gonna close up the hamburger and then I'm gonna go down, we're gonna go, I'm gonna hold controls, get down to that one, two, five. We're looking for the who owes you stuff section. And then we wanna go into the customer balance detail. The customer balance uh, detail, that's what we want. That's the one. And then I'm gonna make this as of the cutoff date, custom cutoff date, which is gonna be 022822, run it. So there we have it. So the AR, notice the original invoice, by the way, was for uh, Mr. Anderson. So in other words, if I made this up in 03022230305222, I mean, that's what I meant to say. Then Mr. Anderson has this invoice that was entered. That's the one we pulled back at the 525 with the adjusting entry but we didn't do the adjusting entry to Mr. Anderson. QuickBooks forced us to use a customer because QuickBooks is gonna try to say, I'm not gonna allow you to be out of balance for the most part by forcing you to use a customer, even when you have a journal entry, if you're recording something to AR. But, uh, so that means we didn't wanna put it to Mr. Anderson because that's gonna mess up the stuff. So we made up this other customer down below called ZZ adjusting entry. And that's where we put the adjusting entry down below so that it doesn't mess up the sub ledger and we can still enter the transaction to do the adjusting entry in a hope that we don't mess up the accounting department. So you can see here, of course, it's with a journal entry as opposed to an invoice where everything else is connected. That's a problem because we can't connect the journal entry to a payment as easily. It's gonna mess stuff up. That's why we wanna at least put it down here into its own account or possibly make a whole other accounts receivable account that's not under an accounts receivable type of account so we don't have to deal with the sub ledger issue. So then we've got the, the 20, so let's change the date up back up top so I can check my total. 022822, the cutoff date, back to the cutoff date and the total down below will still tie out the 2270550, should tie out if I go back to the balance sheet, to the balance sheet 2270150, is that what I said? 2270150, that may not be what I said, but that's what I should have said because that's the right one. Let's go to the tab to the right and let's do the same thing, opening up a report this time for inventory, close up the ham boogie. I'm just gonna type in inventory and look for that inventory valuation summary. That's the one we want, that one that's highlighted in green. Let's do the date change up top. Let's make this as of 022822, run it. So there we have it. Now note that this one should be out of balance. If we pull out the trusty calculator here, we can calculate how much it's out of balance by. We should be able to do it in our head, but we're all addicted to like Excel and calculators. So we don't do stuff. I don't do calculations in my head. That's what the robots are for. I'm gonna go back to the first tab and we got the inventory minus the 4346 and that's gonna be a $400 difference. Where did the whole $400 difference come from? We did an adjusting entry and unlike the accounts receivable, uh, they do not force us even if we're using QuickBooks, that is even if we're using a, uh, a inventory tracking system on a perpetual method, they don't force us to have an inventory item. If I post something to inventory, it's much more easy therefore to have the inventory be off track or out of balance than or from the sub report. So you gotta be careful about that but it's also kind of a benefit in this case because I don't have to deal with adding the inventory with the adjusting entry and messing up the whole inventory process when I try to do the adjusting entry. Okay, finally, we're gonna do the reversing entry. Can you finally get to the point of this thing? I'll get to the point. I wanna get people prepared though because it's a sharp one. It's a sharp point. I don't want anyone to get injured. So if I go down here, I'm gonna open up I'm gonna open up the journal entry now. We're just gonna reverse the journal entry. So if I go into this journal entry, we're gonna go into it. All I'm gonna do is copy the journal entry and then reverse it. So here it is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my screenshot copy. So here's the screenshot copy. I'm just gonna take that journal entry. I'm gonna put it into Word and I'm just gonna paste it or whatever other place you wanna put it. Now we're gonna put it into Word, Word, Word. So I'm gonna go up, so then I'm gonna paste it. Now note, you can also, like if you don't have that screen clipping thing, 
you could uh, you could copy and paste it by by doing the insert and then there's a screen clipping button in word that allows you to clip the screen or just copy the screen this way it's just if you have some copying options okay so that's what we got this is what the journal entry is this is the journal entry behind an invoice debit accounts receivable we had to apply the name over here the customer or they wouldn't let us record it the sales of the product and then the the california department of tax and so on and then but this i think we put into this is the sub account here i should have made that a little bit longer so you could see it cost of goods sold and inventory so if i go back on over here note that this account right there is actually a sub account of this sales tax is way over here so we put it into sales tax payable a sub account of that whole bureaucratic california name okay so now let's make a let's close this out and make a new one a new one is what we want i'm gonna go i'm gonna go back to my report because i don't want to do it in this tab this isn't my working tab this is my balance sheet tab i'm gonna go back to the tab to the left this is where i record stuff this is the recording tab back to the one two five percent plus button we're looking for a journal entry now in a journal entry i'm just going to reverse it exactly now note you might be saying hey don't i need to put like the sales on top and the accounts receivable on the bottom so the debits are on the top and the credit no you don't because that's harder that's harder don't do that just do the same thing and reverse the debits and credits that's easier and then if someone has a problem with that then after you write it down put the debits on tops and the credits on the bottom just to make whoever is unhappy happy or an attempt so oh one oh this is going to be oh three oh one two two and so we're going to start off with accounts receivable accounts receivable and i'm in the business view so it's going to drive me a little crazy because i've got these but i don't think i need to add any new accounts so i think i can handle it i can handle it even though i can't see like the account type on the right hand side why why wouldn't they show me that in the business view it's necessary 525 it's going to be on the credit side 525 i'm going to call this a reversing entry so we know that that's part of the reversing entry process you might want more memo than that but that's the minimum memo that you want and so then i'm going to say that this is going to be for the zzz zzz customer you're saying hey that's not the customer for the original invoice that's what she might be saying and if you were you'd be right because it was mr anderson the original invoice but i don't want to mess up mr anderson's detail and i can't not put something in there because quickbooks makes me so then the other side is going to be the sales of product so this is going to be sales of product product sales of product so way down here there they got it okay and that's going to be then a debit but a 500 i'm just reversing this thing you know you see what i'm doing i don't need to say that we're going to go on over here and then this is going to be the sales tax but it's going to be the sub account sales tax sales tax payable where is it sales tax sales sales tax payable you don't see that one quickbooks okay i noticed that if i type in the parent account california department of so on there's the sales tax it gives me the sales tax and again that search on the business view is not as good in my opinion as the as the accounting view someone needs to fix it into it into it is not listening to me they never listen whatever you need to fix it you need to it's not good so this is cost but it's good on the it's good in the other view though in the in the accounting view hopefully they get this one fixed because i i seriously feel like okay just just record the transaction no one cares here we go the other side's going to be inventory inventory so see i mean how is it that inventory doesn't in did i spell it wrong there we go inventory asset now i'm just being picky at it it's doing a good job it's doing a good job so there it is now note as we look at this 
we needed this adjusting entry here. I mean, we needed the customer here or it won't let us record it. We created another account, sub account, so we didn't mess up the sales tax one. And then we've got the inventory, which we didn't need to apply a sub account, account and should put us back in balance as of uh, 3-1 for our sub ledger. So let's go ahead and save it and close it and then we'll check it out. So everything looks, does that, one more check. Does that, did I miss every, let me know if I missed anything. Did I miss anything? Do I have your A-OK -okay to move forward or did I do something stupid here? Okay, all right, approval has been received, I assume. We're gonna save it and close it and then check it out. Save it and close it back to the balance sheet, holding down control. We're gonna go into the AR again, AR again. This is as of the cutoff date. So now I'm gonna change the date in, in the detail here because now I see the one adjusting entry. Let's bring it on up to 35030522, run it. So now we're gonna have then the original one was entered after 35. We brought it back before the cutoff date with the adjusting entry, the adjusting entry, uh, which was up here, 10, right there. And then we reversed it as of 3-1 so that as of 3-5, we're back out and it's, and it's netted out. And so we were correct as of the cutoff and then we reversed it so it doesn't double up as of 3-5. Why didn't we enter the reversal as of 3-5 so it nets out on the same day? Because we want all our reversals on the same day, the day after the cutoff date. And that's that will make it the easiest to know where they're at. The other side's on the income statement. So let's go down to the income statement. And let's change the income statement, by the way. Let's make this date range up to 03. 0522. Let's make it 03. Let's make it 033122. And then do it by month. A month by month comparison. That's way better. Why didn't you do that from the start? Now you got the Jan, Feb, Mar, and Tote. So if we go then down to the sales, where are you going? Sales is at the top. So we're going to say this is the sales of product. Let's go into that one. And hold down control. Scroll down a bit. And then we're gonna say then the original one was entered on 3-5. We pulled it back before the cutoff date, 228 on 228, and then we reversed it 3-1, so it's not doubled up as of 3-5. See? And then I'm gonna go back up top and I'm gonna go back to our profit and loss and then back to the balance sheet over here. And can't we do that balance sheet thing? We could do the range thing on the balance sheet. Let's do that. 01 to 03, 31, 2, 2. Why don't I do it? that month by month thing here and run that. That's way better, isn't it? Why didn't we do that before? That's way better. So let's go down and say, now we're gonna be down here in the California. This is where the original was. And then we did our adjusting and reversing entries in the subcategory. So we didn't mess up the California department and so on and so forth one, because that's the one where the sales tax widget is tied to. So the original invoice was in here in March, so this was entered after the cutoff date, three different items for it because it's California sales tax and there's three different people you gotta pay for three different government entities and so on and so on. But we put the adjusting entry into one account here on the, on the sales tax payable and then we reversed it, bringing it back down to zero on March. So it's not in there twice at that point in time. And then we had the inventory that is going down inventories up top so if we go into the inventory the original invoice would be over here and we're going to say okay there's the original invoice that was put into place we reversed it on three one we reversed it right there and the adjusting entry to bring it back before the cutoff would be in february so that would be here the february brought it before the cutoff and so i'll scroll down that's the adjusting entry number 10. All right, one more one more uh, item on that. That's the cost of goods sold. Then we'll go to the sub ledgers. Going back to the second tab, the cost of the goods that are sold would be right here. And we can go in, let's go into the total for this one for the cost of the goods that are sold. And scrolling down, we've got then the original one 
was entered after the cutoff here with the invoice. We brought it back before the cutoff, which was 228, the cutoff date, and then we reversed it on 31. Going back then to the uh, income statement, you can see that here because we, we entered it before the cutoff date and then the two net out the reversing entry and, and the actual invoice net out in March. So you can see that there that way as well. Let's go back to the first tab. Now, if we look at the subledger stuff for the accounts receivable, did I mess up the subledger for the accounts receivable? Let's look at the AR report over here and let's check it out. And so I'm going to refresh it. Let's run it, run it. I was running and then scroll down. And so then if I'm in ZZ down here, we've got the adjusting entry as of 228. Let's bring it on up to 35 now. So I'm going to bring it on up to 030522. Run it. Scroll it back down. And so now I can see if I scroll it down here, the ZZ, it nets each other out. Now, again, you got kind of an issue because it nets each other out, but we don't have that same kind of tying or connection between these two transactions as we do with an invoice and a payment. In other words, if this was an invoice and a payment, it would net out to zero. It wouldn't even show on this report because it's only showing the invoices currently. So it's going to show this detail, which is kind of annoying, but it's at the bottom of the report. So hopefully it's not going to mess people up too much. And if we want to avoid it completely, we can make another accounts receivable account that's not an accounts receivable type of account, but rather another current asset account. So you don't have to mess this up at all. That's another method that you can use. So then I can go back up top and Mr. Anderson up top isn't messed up at all. So that looks good. And as of, of course, the end process, the end date, uh, 35, that uh, 22307150, should tie out or let's let's make the end date as of 033122 just to make sure i've got the whole month of of march and now we've got the 227150 if i go back to the balance sheet for march 227150 ties out so we're in balance there let's look at the let's look at the uh the the inventory subledge subledge we remember we were out of balance here for the let's run it again for February, because we, we've got the 4746, if I go back to the balance sheet, then we've got we've got the 4346. But if I then bring this up to 030522, or let's do it as of 033122, and run it, if I do that, then we're at the 4346. And if I go back to the balance sheet, we're at the 4346, we're back in balance which is great because I was worried, but now we're okay. Everything is okay. Everything is right with the world again. So breathe easy. So there is that. Now, if we go back to the first tab, just to take a look at some other detail with the accounting department, because remember, we're trying to be, we're trying not to mess up the accounting process with the adjusting entries. So if I get into the get paid and paid area, and that would be, by the way, if you were in the accounting view, it would be under the sales area if you go into there and then you go into the customers and i go into the mr anderson stuff i don't have anything in here because i didn't i didn't with regards to my adjusting entries it doesn't mess up what where they would normally go we would normally go in the normal accounting process to try to collect on information or give information to a customer we're not going to be like oh what is this what is this journal entry in your thing here and then we do have this other customer down here, though, that does have that information in it. Hopefully, again, it's out of the way. If you go into it, then you've got the adjusting and reversing entry down there. And, and it's kind of funny looking, right? So again, if you wanted to avoid that, you could simply not use an accounts receivable account, but make an accounts receivable to type of account, which is a non uh, accounts receivable type, but rather an other current asset type of account. So you got a couple methods you can use. Let's go back on over to the trial balance and see where we stand as of this point in time. Let's put, let's bring, this is as of 228, that's the same. Let's make the make the reversing entries as of 03, uh, 03, uh, oh, let's make it, do it this way. 010122 to 033122. And there we have it. So we, we can see this is where we stand as of March 31st, after, the month after the cutoff date 
So you can kind of check that reversing entry if your numbers match up, that's great. I won't open up the journal report this time because we're running kind of long here. So we'll do that, of course, at the end of the section. And so we can take a look at any differences with that report.